Hey, Dennis, how are you? Hello, Welcome Claudio. Back. Welcome back. Is that one of those Claudio shirts you're wearing? Oh, yeah, it's... Um, hey, Walton. I like that one. Travis Walton. Um, I love that one. Rendition of his experience. I have the poster of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Travis. So, yeah. This you would have been a good illustrator to do The Elder. Sorry? You would have been a good illustrator to do The Elder, one of my first concepts for the Elder album cover. Oh, well, let's save that story for the, the Elder chapter. Yeah, it would have been good for that. All right. That little kid is reminding me, yeah. Well, thank you for that. I wish I, was, uh, I, wasn't, uh, uh, I wasn't six at the time that the Elder came out. I could have done it. <laughs> it would have been very interesting. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Stick figures with that. Uh, with <laughs> You know, I thought of doing children's art. You did? This album cover, yeah. I think they still should do it. Get some kids to draw, kiss, you know, put it together somehow. I think it'd be great. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, um, where the, what was the last thing? Oh, I like to, no, uh, double platinum. So now it's 1978, Kiss Mania is all over the place and they're putting something out every six months, not only merchandising, but albums. And this time they decided in order to keep egos at, at, at you know, at, uh, control within the band, they decided to do this, you know, project, which was four solo albums released the very same day. And, uh, and for that, they call you again to find an artist to do four separate album covers. Well, not, not, not even to find an artist, but to decide what to do. What to do. Right. So nobody gave you a concept again. It was all your idea. How Absolutely you nothing again. Um, they, they just said, we're, you know, they gave me the story. We're going to release. Each guy's going to do his own solo album. We're going to release them on the same day. So that's going to be uh, never been done before. Yeah, it was a pretty uh, out there concept. Nobody. Yeah, had really. Before. And uh, I would imagine there was a lot of pressure on each member of the band also to get it done by a certain time and what have you, and to put together a decent album. And I'm, I'm sure they felt competitive against each other to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, I, when I started to think about it, I think the first things that go through your head, my head, was, uh, you know, each guy's stage character, his persona. Gene is a demon, Paul is star child, etc. And how would I, and I, and, and, and they're Kiss albums, but they're solo albums. So how do I, how, how do I depict each guy's cat? Well, they got their outfit and I guess I could put them in a, um, a an set. An environment, a set. That an would environment, be a set. Mm -hmm. And very elaborate with it. I thought maybe this would be a good chance to really go overboard with the with the set and the setting and, and all of that. that you know, the, you uh, know that, that was always a question in my mind when I looked at those covers. That part of the uh, the kiss appeal and I guess um, public reputation or uh, imagery was the costumes. And you decided not to put the costumes on the cover, just the face. So that was a, a big decision. Big decision. Uh, uh, the more I thought about it, you know, because I, I don't really want to go with the first idea uh, necessarily. I want to boil it down in my head. I want to think, why am I coming up with this? Is there something better just because it was a, my first idea and I kind of fell in love with it? That doesn't mean it's going to be, let me just think, 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 think. And the more I thought, uh, the more I thought that I, that I wanted it to be Timeless. This is my, my key word. Classic. Timeless. Classic. Last forever. Look at it today. Look at it 10 years from now. It still has quality feeling about it. There's nothing dated about it, which I guess if they wore certain costumes, that would have sort of dated it. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, uh, a, that's a very good point. Uh, if, I, if I use certain kind of uh, typography, the, what was current at the time, you know, 
type styles come in and out of fashion like clothes. You know, and the graphic word, designers are always latching onto the latest, you know, what it looks like. On what's hip. In other words, you try to avoid anything that was representative of that particular era. That's right. Uh, of any era. Mm -hmm. uh, any era. Timeless. Timeless. So I thought uh, we'll do a portrait of them. So it's just the face. And, uh, and then I thought about it and thought about it. And I said, you know, uh, unless it's the best photograph ever in the world, taken by, you know, by the best photographer and retouched, and I, I, I just could not imagine it being beautiful. It, it's a photograph. Uh, it doesn't have that uh, wonderful, uh, I don't know if I want to say mysterious quality, but something like other, uh, other, not not so real, but real quality, that type of thing. Uh, and I said, well, maybe it should be a, a painting, an illustration, a, a portrait painted. Was there, before you found uh, Eraldo Carogatti, was ever a consideration uh, Harry Kennigan? For, oh, no, not for the portraits. Okay. No, that style didn't, didn't uh, connect in my head. Mm -hmm. I see. I don't know what I was thinking of, but it wasn't that. Okay. You know how that is, right? You say, well, I don't know what I want, but I don't want that. So. You wanted something, you wanted something classy that would not, um, basically, not the opposite, but something very different to what you already did, which was comic book, cartoonish type of- uh, There you go, right, right. I wanted it to be serious. Serious, that's the word, yeah, 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 okay. Yep, uh, so, uh, Vinny and I, my, my, my coworker, we're, we're thumbing through all of the, uh, the uh, illustrator annuals that come out every year. Catalogs. Not a catalog because you don't buy anything from there. It's, it's a uh, award-winning. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Did the Illustrator see? Society. Mm -hmm. Got it, okay. Put out by the Illustrator Society. Uh -huh. Also, print, print magazine, uh, uh, communication arts, CA, uh, Graphis, which is the one from, I think, Switzerland, the best in graphic design. Got it. And so I, I'm cross-referencing and looking for, you know, anything that will, that will hit me. Vinny finds something by Araldo Corrigati that he did for Playboy magazine. Mm -hmm. I think it was a face or something. I don't know what it was. It didn't uh, impress me uh, in terms of something for Kiss, but Vinny liked it. And I didn't know what he liked about it, but he said, well, it has a uh, you know, quality that he thought was good. I said, all right, well, let's keep looking. Maybe a certain realistic quality to it? Very realistic, but uh, I said, well, let's keep looking. He's not going to go away. We can come back to that. I didn't, I didn't say no, uh, but I didn't say yes. I just said, nah, I don't know. So uh, then I found a guy that I liked. Uh, and I believe this is who did the, this job. I had trouble remembering over the years because mm -hmm. we did have another layout done before uh, Araldo. By another artist. Yes. And uh, where that is, who knows? Was it was it the same concept? Just oh well, yeah, in a way, it was it was the four faces, and uh, uh, that was about it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it was a completely different style. Uh, it was it was uh, it was uh, ob objective in terms of you know what you were looking at, you know, it was nicely done, but way different style. Not not the pinpoint sharp focus that Geraldo has. Mm. A little softer, a little more painted, you know, a little, a little okay. soft. Very nice, artistic. Done by a guy named, I believe, you can look him up, Daniel Mafia. Okay. M-A-F-F-I-A. -F -F and, uh, and he painted like, uh, a lot of things he did were sort of like uh, Renaissance looking from mm. that era. Mm. He did sepia tones and uh, they look very Leonardo da Vinci, you know, I see, okay. and, and Michelangelo and everybody. And it was a wonderful quality that he had. So he did the four guys and, uh, 
I liked it. I liked it, but it just didn't knock me out. And I, I guess I needed to be knocked out. So I said, let's go, and we're running out of time and we have to get going. And I said, let's try that guy that you like, uh, uh, Vinny, uh, you know, we'll see what we'll see. So I talked to him on the phone, Geraldo, and I, I give him the project. And I say, you gotta do a layout. You gotta do a sketch or something just to let me know that, cause I, I don't know if you're exactly right, but you could be. So you have to convince me please. And uh, obviously they get paid. We talked about this before. We don't, we don't ask for uh, artwork and sketches for nothing. We pay. And uh, so he did, he did somebody. I don't think he did all four. Uh, so he did. The hell? Look, maybe he did. This is a foggy part uh, about uh, this job. But anyway, he did somebody. He presented, and, one, of, he presented one of the members to you yeah, as, a, yeah. as a sample? Yeah, one or maybe more, but uh, one for sure. Who? I don't know. Don't remember. And, uh, but he didn't, he didn't go full, full force on it. He didn't, he didn't kill himself on it. Right. He did it, you know, layout. It wasn't sketchy. It was fairly tight, but it wasn't very tight. What can I say? And uh, so I'm looking at it and, you know, I, I'm really worried at this point because, again, not impressing me that much. Huh. Not that much. You know, I could see the guy has ability, but does he have, what, what is he going to do when he goes further? Does it get much better? Uh, and, you know, we have a deadline looming, and this is the biggest project ever. The four solo albums, the biggest project. They had, they had absurd budget for each record. I think Gene's record cost $100,000, which was a yeah. ridiculous amount of money that, that. to do a record, you know? <laughs> so, I, uh, I, I held my breath and I said, you know, okay, Geraldo, uh, you can go ahead and, and do it. I said, but here's my concerns. The likenesses have to be dead on. They can't be, you know, if there's a little something funny and it doesn't have to be much, but boy, you see it, you know, when you're looking at a picture, oh, that doesn't quite look like him. You know, it's just like strange. So I said, you got to nail that. You got to nail the like The fans, the fans will know. Oh, and yeah. You've got to nail the likeness. It can't be weird. It's got to, got to be them. I said, and uh, the quality of it, I said, you know, you, uh, this, that, you know, whatever I was looking at his sketch and I was making points about it. And he was nothing but confident. Uh, he, he assured me, Dennis, you will love it with his accent, you know. Uh, oh, you will love it. For everything you're telling me, he was a pro. Total pro. Mm -hmm. Total pro. I, I, I really admired uh, Araldo to the, as much as you could admire anybody. I mean, he was, he, and uh, I said, all right, all right, Araldo, you got it. I said, but uh, this is the biggest, biggest project in the, in the career of these four guys. It's just the biggest thing I've done for them so far. It's, I said, everybody's ass is on the line here. And mine is, mine is on the line because I have given you the okay. Mm -hmm. And if you don't come through, I suck. Not you, I suck. <laughs> and in regards of the likeness, as far as I can tell, uh, you gave them the four pictures that are on the cover of the 1977 tour book. You know, it's the same. It's obviously the same. The same face. Yeah. Oh yeah. Same and also we use the in uh, double flat. Right. Except except Aces. Except Ace, yeah, right. I think Aces is the only one that I've never seen the original picture. All of the other three, I've seen them except Aces. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but, and the reason for that was, uh, you know, we, uh, like I said many times before, we didn't have a lot of great pictures of just them like this. We had them on stage and this and that and doing things, but just a nice picture of their face that we could use for reference. Uh, didn't have many, so I kept using the same ones. And that was Barry, right? That was Barry. Uh, I, think so. I think so, yeah. I, yeah. Think so. Okay. I begged for pictures, I begged, but couldn't always get what I wanted. So uh, Araldo went to work 
and uh, halfway through or three quarters of the way through the project, I flew out to Chicago. Uh, and uh, we went, I went to the place where he worked. He worked for a place for called uh, something beyond the and something like three names. It's, it's out there in the KISS world. There's, somebody knows. And I always forget. Yeah, well, I read, I read in, a, in a previous interview you gave a long time ago that it was this big place that he had, he was sharing uh, offices with other artists that- Yeah, he, he was either sharing or he actually worked for that company and he only got paid, a, you know, a salary. A I don't know. Wow. Yeah, I don't know, it could have been. Mm -hmm. But it was one of those old fashioned places that they uh, probably had more of them in Chicago than they had in New York, you know, as things got modernized. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, you know, like I said, within the same building or in the same floor, you could go down the hall and get a airbrush artist to do something for you. Right. You can get a guy to do a pastel rendering with pastel chalks, which is what they used to use before magic markers mm -hmm. to do layouts. So they have one guy for each specialty they might Yeah, get. and it, sometimes a job would go right down the line. Mm -hmm. the guy would do the lettering or the headline on the ad. The other guy would do the rendering. In, in pastel chalk of a can of uh, tomato soup. It was efficient and everything was perfect because everybody had a specialty. Yeah. But Arado was the illustrator. So uh, we went, uh, Vinny and I both went, and uh, I, I was standing at Arado's drawing table looking at his, what, whichever one it was on the table at the time. And it was coming to life, you know, it was coming to life. It was, I think it was nearly done. I remember specifically two things I said to him, which, which uh, made the job. One of them, you know, besides his wonderful, his wonderful work, but the art, the art director, you know, saw something and uh, he had their, he had their, they were on black background, but he had their neck and, and it would end here on, on all of them. But he had it ending abruptly. It would just be like neck and necklace or something, and then yeah, and the V neck and then black. Right where that where the costume would start. Yeah, and it would just go to black, uh, and it, with a with a sharp line. It was no. I said I don't like that. They look decapitated. Ha. So, I said, "You have an airbrush guy here?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I just take that black and fade it, make their neck fade into the black, fade into the black. By airbrush. And, and he went immediately and he, and he did it. They did it right there so I could see it. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh man, it's a big improvement. He said, yeah, Dennis, you're right. I said, oh, great. So then he's painting away and he's got the backlighting on their hair started and it's a yellow, like white light, yellow light. And I'm thinking to myself, well, they're all going to have that? That's, I don't like that. And then it hit me, oh, oh. And I said, you know, a few years ago, I did a, a, a merchandising product for them, and it was the pendants, right? Pendants, or, uh, pendants, right? With and the they also had they were all pins or pendants, right? With the signatures, right? It was Gene Gene Simmons, made out of metal, and it was you could hang it on your neck, or you could also pin it. They had two different versions, and they came on a little piece of cardboard. Uh huh. Yeah. That would be hanging on a hook in the store, like potato chips, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably by the cash register, so you say, oh, I, I have to have one of these, you know. And uh, we, uh, we had, it said something on it, like, uh, apropos to each member, uh, Gene said, you know, wear my signature and you'll be a demon like me or some shit. And Ace said, oh, dear earthlings, you know, you will float away when you, I don't know what they said. I can't remember. <laughs> and uh, Peggy, our, Peggy, our writer, she wrote those things for them. And, uh, uh, and Bill O'Coin, when he gave me the job, he said, oh, it's a cheap shit job. He said, just knock it out. It's crap. It's just crap. We're going to hang it up. They sell it for a couple of bucks. He said, one color. Don't go crazy with designing or anything. I said, okay, I got it. All right. And Bill's walking out the door. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, there's four guys, and you're telling me one color, 
but maybe it won't be that much more expensive, Bill, if I just do a flat color, but a different one for each guy. He said, oh, okay. And Bill always said, okay, no matter what I suggested, even if it cost a little money. I don't, he just always said, okay, to me. It was pretty cool of him. So then I said, oh, all right, thanks. Then I said, what the hell did I get myself into? Then I have, no, oh, all right. <laughs> I said, well, Gene is red. Yeah, go through the- uh, um, Why? Wait, wait, wait. Um, now we have established, I think we established it in a previous interview that you came up with the color. That's, we already talked about that. I did, yeah. But now you're gonna go through what was your reasoning to pick up a specific color for each one. Right, and most of it is obvious, uh, but uh, it still, still had to be done, right? So, Gene, Gene is blood and fire. Blood and fire, so he's red. Ace is blue because, well, it's the sky. The sky is blue, and that's as close as I can get to, a, uh, to space. <laughs> and I can't make him black like space, right? So, Peter is a cat. Bo, but he's not just any cat. He's a jungle cat. So, he's in the jungle. Jungle's green. He's green. It's as good as any reason. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was stuck on Paul, really stuck, because I didn't know what he is. I said, Paul, what the hell is Paul? What color is Paul? Uh, I'm going looking at colors. Ah, why is it so hard? You know, Jesus, it should be easy. And then I said, well, he's a star child. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's ambiguous. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, come on. Like so Paul. then I guess it hit me. Somebody said, well, he's like a lover. Lover. I said, oh, passion. Passion is purple. So he became purple or some variation of purple. So I remember that while I'm standing there with Arado. I said, Arado, Arado. I said, the backlighting. I said, we have to do four different color backlighting for these guys. I said, uh, I'm remembering something now. And I gave these guys a, a color, not that anybody really realized it back then, but I did, because it was on a cheap thing that nobody really paid attention to. And uh, I said, you have a PMS book? He said, yeah. He gave me the PMS book. Pantone. Mm -hmm, Pantone. And uh, everybody knows, if you're, if you're a designer. Each color has a code. And there's a gazillion colors in here and a, a shade of each one and they all have a number. Mm -hmm. And when you're printing, if you're printing spot colors, you designate a PMS color standing for Pantone matching system. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll get your color, you get exact color. So I got the PMS book, I pulled out the red and, uh, very, and, the, and the other three colors. And we stuck it on each guy's board and I said, that's it, that's the backlighting. And he said, good. And I said, good. And I left. I went back to New York. A week or so later, he came with the four pieces. Everybody was, was uh, knocked out. They were so beautiful. You, you didn't do it. It a small thing to uh, pick up the colors. Because from this point on, after the solo record, it was everywhere. Not only I, in the merchandise and, and advertising, but also in their costumes. Right. They picked up on it. So Nobody ever said it. They picked up on that. Right. On the but it was your I, idea. Nobody asked me or said anything to me. They just went with it. Next thing I knew, I'm looking at it. I'm saying, <laughs> they, they're using lighting like that. They're using the costumes like that. Everything. Yeah. And they still use it. It's still, still there. Right. right. As, though, as though it appeared magically in their life. Right. <laughs> oh, no. And they probably think that they thought of it. Of course. But our idea. What are you talking about? And the other thing I like to explore, you, you said that, you know, it came back with the paintings that were stunning. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Eraldo uh, Carugatti's technique? Well, uh, all I can tell you for sure is that he used gouache. Gouache. Which is a watercolor, water-based paint. Mm -hmm. But it comes in tubes, not like the little 
uh, what do you call those, those things, uh, you know, like in a watercolor set and you add water to it. Right. Like the little palettes, you know, not like that. That's what we think, that's what I think of when I think of watercolor, but it comes in tubes and it's, it's opaque. You could put it on quite opaque. It doesn't have to be and like the, watercolory. That tells me he was a total professional because back in the day, gouache was the painting they were using because they knew after when, when it was done that he had to be photographed. Oh. So an opaque finish was the best for any type of photographic reproduction or slide or transparency or whatever you want to use because it was easier to light. You put two lights at 45 degrees on each side and that's the way you do reproductions. You because it was flat, right? You're saying a mat. Flat, it didn't have any, any no shine. sheen to it. Nothing. No sheen at all. It was dead, what we call dead mat in the business. <laughs> so, well, Arado well, delivers the job to New York. Mm -hmm. uh, we get him a cup of coffee, black like his soul, as uh, what Araldo said. <laughs> How do you like it, Araldo? Black like my soul, you know. Uh, it's shocking coming from him. He was such a nice, gentle man, you know. Uh, wearing a tweed sport jacket with a sweater vest and a shirt and a tie. Old school. Old school. And, uh, and we're looking at uh, we're looking at uh, uh, Gene, and it may have been it may have been Bill O'Coin came in and looking and saying, "Wow, are these great?" So I think it was Bill who suggested it because it was it was not me because I was happy the way it was. But Bill said, "You know, Gene does this blood thing. Maybe we could do a little some." So he explained it to her, although he says, "Okay." And literally goes into his pocket inside of his jacket. He got a little piece of cardboard with dried up lumps of color on it. And he was carrying them around just, yeah. just like that? <laughs> maybe, maybe he needed to touch something up. I don't know. And he's got a brush with four hairs on it, you know? <laughs> you, don't see, you, don't see, you don't see things like that anymore. He said, can you give me a little water? So we gave him a little water. And he didn't even sit down, I don't think. He just stood there and he's... It just went right on it. No little pencil. Right there, right, on. right there in the office in front of you. Well, I'm looking at it and I'm, I, w I had to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking out the window and I'm going, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, please, God, don't let him screw this up. And uh, <laughs> so he, uh, I come back and he's, you know, then he puts a shadow behind it and he puts a highlight on it and what a pro. What a pro. And these I were photographed done, those things as quick as I could before I, anything happened to them. I'm assuming, since you told me he was using wash, that he didn't use canvas. He used the artboards, right? Which that he used the what? Artboard, cardboard, right? It was, it was on illustration board, yeah. Illustration board, right. Yeah, yeah, that's what they used to do use for, uh, for wash. But gouache takes very nice to it. Uh, uh, you probably use the double weight, you know, so it wouldn't it wouldn't warp too easy. And uh, and I'm assuming they were bigger than the 12 by 12 of the vinyl. I believe they're 24 inches. Double the size, right? Yeah, I think they're 24 inches. Yeah. And uh, do you remember do you remember the band's reaction to their own? Career? Well, I I don't I don't know if I was in the room when when we showed them to them. But, they were never there four at a time anyway. It's usually Paul most of the time, and then Gene Paul. The other two guys, I swear, I don't think they cared. <laughs> no, that's, that's plenty of, uh, of, of record of that, that they didn't care. They were just yeah, I don't know, they yeah. were being rock stars. That wasn't their thing. They were musicians. They, I don't know, the business end of it mm -hmm. or the art end of it. So. That was it. I photographed. They photographed beautifully. I mean, uh, no trouble. Like you say, no trouble at all. Eight by ten transparencies. Huge. Oh, they were they were delicious. They were beautiful. Huge. So, yeah. Oh, when I had a copy art, I would get eight ten. Yeah. Okay. The same. Uh, the same thing they use for um, Love Gun and Destroyer, right? Big transparency. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Destroyer, Love Gun. Uh, what, what are, uh, any other art we had a copy? Not really, no, that was it. And you're right, 
And those panties did have a shine on them. They had varnish. But uh, these guys who did it, they, they were good. They, uh, you're right. They would go two lights at a 45 degree angle, which kind of cancels out a lot of stuff. But if you pick up a highlight or two here and there, they used uh, uh, this filter. Um, what do you call it? A lot of cameras. A lot of people have it on their camera all the time. Skyline? Skyline? Maybe a skylight filter, uh, but it's not infrared. Not in, uh, yeah, I guess it's a skylight filter. But it, it would take care of those little problems, but not change the color. It, uh, skylight usually is used to avoid reflections. Yes. Yeah, well, I think that's probably what they did. But most of the problems were taken care of with the lighting. And you know, I could always take care of a highlighter too on a transparency, right. easy, and that would be okay. But then it comes, and then this is the part when your part of the job, the hands-on comes, right? That well, then, yes. Now I do the design. Mm -hmm. Are we going to say kiss? How are we going to say Paul Stanley? And uh, so this, this is going back to the timeless, not trying to make it look um, trendy, uh, but to keep it in a, just in its own space. Not trendy, not retro, nothing like that. Just existing for itself. That's when I first decided to Very, uh, do the, yeah. uh, the outline KISS logo. Which was the first time anybody's uh, I've seen the, the logo. First time, the first time it was used, the way we did it. I had a guy, I had a guy draw it for us. You know, I gave him the logo. I said, give me an outline, no, nothing solid. Got it back. You know, a good, good guy with the ruling pen, mm -hmm. the rapidograph, whatever they used. And uh, uh, so that it wouldn't take up too much visual interest in that corner. I didn't want it to have a lot of weight. I wanted it to be I have genes. there, but not there. Right. So then I said, well, while I'm at it, uh, why don't I do the same thing with the name of the guy? I'll outline it up. I, I didn't want anything to have too much weight up there. You know, what would I do? What am I, what am I doing? Put it in white? It's going to be like, ah, it's going to take so much away from the portrait. Uh, if I had my way, I, maybe I, I probably shouldn't have put any type on it. Nothing. No kiss. No Paul Stan. It's just the face, you know. Come to think of it, let's do that. In the reissue. <laughs> but, so I found a typeface uh, called Eurostyle. To me, it seems like microgramma. And it could be microgramma. Microgramma, sorry, my, my Spanish got in the way. Micro, yeah. But it could be microgramma because they're very similar. Mm -hmm. And if you say it's microgramma, I, I'm going with you because not I go back and forth on that. I have, to this day, I have not gone back to check to see which one it is. It, that's what it looks to me, but it seems to me that microgramma is a little bit more compressed vertically. More okay, yeah, no, a little more extended. More extended, yes. Yeah, microgramma. I, I think you're right. And I think I picked microgramma because it was a little more unusual than Euro style. It, you know what? It's funny about microgramma. It still has the same name in the font catalog. A lot of those old fonts have changed. Uh, they changed their names. Yeah. I don't know why. What was the logic to it? Well, uh, people steal them. They steal them. And they give it a different name and, you know. Because I, I, so a lot of theft, a lot of theft were not. Somewhere, somewhere back in Chile. I still have one of those catalogs, those font, old 80s font catalogs. I don't have an old type catalog here anymore. So, and, and I remember a lot of those names. And Microgramma is one of the few that still has the same name. Microgramma. So it's very extended. Uh, I did it in uh, an outline. And uh, a Microgramma might have come that way. Might have, they might have had an outline version. I don't recall. Because I don't think it had to be because... Yeah. I don't know how else I would have done it. No, I, th I think it does. Back then, yeah, back then you couldn't, <clears throat> you couldn't do it unless you drew it. So, uh, kiss outline, the name of the guy outline, white, not too heavy, uh, not taking away too much from the illustration. Um, the back is as uh, simple as can be, but again, I'm trying to not, I don't want to be self-conscious with the design. Hey, look at the clever thing I did. 
I was trying to be the opposite of that. Jeez. Just let it be there. Gene's record has a lot of information in the back. <laughs> well, he, he, he had to thank everybody in the world, didn't he? He thanked me. Thank you, Gene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So um, let's talk about the inserts, the posters that the solo albums uh, had, which were right. four posters that you know, lock each other. Yep. And, um, you got David Bird to design them, a very famous designer that did a lot of uh, Fillmore East posters. And um, so why did you choose him? Uh, you know, I, I like David's style. Uh, the stuff that he's done for Broadway shows was his most famous to me. Uh, Broadway posters. He was in, uh, in show business. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he liked, he was a show business kind of a designer. I knew David's work. Uh, I had hired him before, before there was Kiss. I used him on some work for the agency. We had a client called, um, my boss was from Cleveland. So he still had, even though we were in New York agency, he still had connections in Cleveland and some clients from Cleveland. So he had a client called Cleveland Tux. They rented tuxedos and uh, Cleveland Tux. And we did a little newspaper ads for them all the time. So uh, we did a little campaign with illustrations and uh, I used David on those. Uh, that was probably the first time I used David for anything. Probably early 70s? Early 70s. And then you call him back to help you with that photo shoot for the first Kiss album. Right? Exactly, right, right. So um, researching on, uh, on, on David Bird, he did amazing poster, posters that I was I wasn't even aware it was him, like that, that famous uh, Jimi Hendrix poster, With face. And he has a, a very interesting style, sort of Art Nouveau. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure he uh, was very influenced by that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So Bill knew him from that, and then, I don't know, uh, maybe he liked his work. Um, so I think he said, let's let get David Byrd to do the posters. And each guy's personality, you know, with the fire and flowers and the jungle and space. And, uh, uh, but the concept was that you had to buy all, the concept always was you had to buy all four albums. So this was another trick to make people like it. Uh, yeah, it was merchandising. And right. so, you know, if you recall the record store, we had a, a bag, a plastic bag that would, you could put the album in when you bought it, which is, but which it had is four on it which is now a very hot collectibles item. That right, and you only got the bag if you bought all four. Right. <laughs> they wouldn't give you the bag otherwise. So, going with the idea that yeah, you really wanted to have all four, so we made these four individual posters, but really, you put them together, they interlocked, and you put them together, you get one long, big poster. Uh, so I made like a little jigsaw puzzle and we die cut a square out of one guy on that side and on the other side would be a positive square shape that would fit into it. And some of the art spilled over uh -huh. from one to the other. So Paul is throwing roses and they're all over his background, but then they spill over onto whoever interlocked with them, I forget, probably Jean. So roses onto, few roses on Jean's picture and then some fire on the next guy and et cetera. And so besides just interlocking, also the art overlapped. So when it was you put it all together, it made a nice long, big post. You know, some of the artwork is like, meh. Yeah, yeah, it's- uh, And I think David, David said they didn't give me any time. He said he worked all, all night for two nights and I had to have it by Monday and it was- and I read you know, that he had a very tight deadline, like three days. To I know that always comes up, uh, that always comes up. I, you know, personally do not recall uh, giving him that tight a deadline that he says it was. He He's, says he had to do it over the weekend or something. Yeah. And that, I don't, I don't, I, I can't imagine doing that to him. Uh, because I know what's involved. I, I know what's possible and what's not possible. And, uh, but maybe uh, something like that happened. And to me, the most um, disappointing aspect of the poster is the likeness of the faces. They don't look like them. They look like, uh, I don't know, somebody who's not familiar with Kiss doing a Kiss 
True sure. enough. Yeah. yeah, true enough. So uh, we got what we got. And, uh, you know, there, there's some nice parts to those things, but I really, I really believe that it would be better without them. Maybe that could have been another project. We could have given David a lot more time. And, uh, you know, there you go. Uh, to conclude this interview, I'd like to do a little um, tribute to Eraldo Carugatti, who, Carugatti in Italian. Eraldo Carugatti, Carugatti. Yeah, Carugatti, yeah. To, um, I found a little bio of him. He was, let me, let me put my glasses on. Eraldo Carigatti was born in 1921 in Milano, Italy. After the fall of the Italian dictator Benito Mussolini, the Nazis captured Carigatti and placed him in the Dortmund concentration camp, where he survived by painting portraits of the German soldiers and creating and trading forged Nazi ration stamps. That's crazy. He escaped in 1945 and joined the U.S. Army as an interpreter. He spoke Italian, English, French, and German. Ultimately, Carugatti moved to Evanston, Illinois, and worked for the firm uh, Beyond the, the, the Chico. That was uh, the company that you... Yes, right. Beyond the Chico, yeah. Right, which worked in graphic design, photography, and commercial art. Carugatti became an illustrator who designed covers for publications such as The Rotarian, Time Magazine, National Lampoon, and many others. And also, he did Rush's 1975's album, Fly, Fly By Night. Have you seen that one? It's, it's an owl. Yeah, 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 I have. Yep, yep. And he did, he did that before uh, the solos, right? Yeah, it's, it, he did that in 1975. And I think it was commissioned by um, Alex Lifeson. I don't know how Alex Lifeson found him, but he commissioned the, the art from him. The National Portrait Gallery and at the Smithsonian Institution owns five of Carugatti's portraits, wow. including, including of Sandra Day O'Connor. I don't know who's that. Oh, the first female, female to serve as U.S. Supreme Court Justice. Yes. And of Alexander Haig, who worked as Secretary of State under President Reagan and yep. Chief of Staff under President Nixon and Ford. Carugatti died in 1977 at the age of 76. Yeah, when I met him, he was, uh, he said he was uh, refereeing soccer games on the weekends, <laughs> running around, and he was in his 50s, you know, late. Well, it, it, Italians, like Chileans, are very much into soccer. It's yep. the real sport. Yep. So, um, well, I guess you finding Carugatti was a really just a strike of luck like you finding Ken, right? Sure enough. I give Vinny uh, credit for liking him more than me. <laughs> but I came around to my credit. <laughs> but I had to be convinced. You know, I, I, I had to be convinced. I didn't like him initially. Not, not really. It didn't give me enough reason to like him, really. But uh, uh, talking to him and seeing the sketch and little by little by little. So. And I guess it's fair to say that stand the, the, the test of time because along with Destroyer and Rock and Roll Over is the most used piece of artwork in Kiss merchandise ever. Yep, that's right. The solo that's right. are everywhere. I've seen right. people carrying around towels, or beach towels or whatever <laughs> you name it with the solo records cover, it's crazy. Mm. That's true. So anyway, Dennis, this was enlightening as usual. Thank you so uh, much for doing I don't know, this. Uh, I hope I uh, gave the Kiss fans something to think about. Well, I'm sure. So next one will be Dynasty, which I actually, Dynasty is my favorite Kiss record from the 1970s. So I have a lot of questions about that. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So see you next time, Dennis. Thank you so much. Thanks, Claudio.